She actually did it. Did y'all see that? <laughs> well, hi, friends. Happy New Year. Hi, hi. I thought I... <sighs> I was thinking about some things this morning. I wanted to connect and say I love you. And, and as we go into this new year, the possibilities. What What is the theme of your year? That is my question. And I know you're like, girlfriend, I still have a hangover. Listen, nothing is required but you to just breathe and just begin to think, you know, about what is the theme of your year. And I was talking, it's like, I was talking to my daughter and we were saying how Really, if, if the theme in any of your years has not been health, it has to have a component of health every year, but if it's not been health to learn and start to implement, that's where if you start with that, everything else is easier. It's easier when you can think and move and breathe, right? And you're not addicted and driven around by the, the toxic food. I mean, chemicals, we call it food, but it's toys. A recreational activity for your slow, though, direct demise of health, right? Um, and another thing is, not just how many, how many years and days and weeks and months have you spent obtaining the information, but not implementing it? That is the question, huh? Um, a new you. We need to get honest with ourselves. You know, we say we want all these things. We're like, I, I want, um, I want to run a marathon this next year. I, I want, uh, I want that medal on my wall. I, I want to be in a relationship. I want, but if we really look at what that takes to have that, right? I, I want to be eating raw vegan. I want to be creating health. Well, what does that take? It takes more than just eating bananas, right? It takes more than just eating bags of nuts and seeds. It takes more than just you thinking the world's gonna accommodate you when you're doing something totally different. That don't make any sense, right? So do you really want that? Getting honest with ourselves. What is this year's thing gonna be? What is the main thing? What do you think? I I am having a year of release this year, which I can tell you more about, but I have been thinking a lot about that. This is just a different thing I'm gonna be talking about, but um, really I'm just talking to myself, you know, and I just thought I'd bring you along and then we could chat to it. <laughs> uh, I've had a, uh, anyway, that's another story, but um, I'm having a releasing because I have really noticed that the more personal things that I own, now I do like to create and it makes me feel good to create safety in my life and um, which is a facade anyway, but like um, when I traded cars, I wanted to make sure I, I still, I didn't spend more. I still, because my other car, I worked to pay it off, you know, and to pay off the one before that and I added a little to her and now I just don't want to go back to those payments. So, um, that kind of thing, but creating space. I have realized that the more things that I have to manage, it's like a subconscious bogging down of responsibility for so many things that I can't be creative. I can't be in my essence and flow, so to speak, you know? Um, stuff stifles my creativity. It really does. Um, I like to work from a blank slate, uh, you know, from a clean easel. And that doesn't mean it's always gonna be clean because, you know, when you begin something, it seems difficult, but it's just different. And in the middle, oh, when all the paints are out and you roll the tarp out and, and you have your smock on and there's paint flying and, and in the middle it's messy. But that's what it takes to get to the other side where it's beautiful. And that is a summary of something that the beautiful Robin Sharma says. Uh, stuff stifling my creativity. I wanna have what is current in my life, what I'm currently using, currently doing, currently becoming and being. There was a squirrel out there. Say, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> you 
you know? I don't want to have, for example, um, all of these paints in my closet or all of these um, things I'm holding on to that one day I'll get back to that. I want to be in releasing of things that I know if one day I want to be back to that, that I can create having that again in my life. And until then, I want to give those paints and brushes and an easel to the nearby school where little children can use it. What is current in my life and what is current in your life, you know? Did you wake up today in health? Did you? I did. Did you wake up today with excitement for your life? And purity for the love and intention you have for what's your main thing this year? What's the theme of your year? I mean, we usually don't take time to think this. This is why the world dictates who we're going to be, what we're going to be, and what the heck we're going to do, you know? Because we're running behind all the time. We're waiting on somebody else to tell us what we're doing that day. I'm going to get up before the world. And when you check in with me, I'll let you know what I'm doing. Tell me what you need, and I'll tell you when I can get to it. Right? I can get you on the list. Because I have love for all the people. Because I have time for all the people. Because I fill my cup up first so that abundance is flowing over. You know what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Have in my life what is current and releasing the rest. How brilliant is that, right? In the last years, I've, I've decluttered so much. I mean, I had a, a whole household of, of a, a marriage and, and raising kids and all the, and I started to think, why am I keeping this mobile made out of tin that Carly made in the first grade? I'm not hanging it up. I'm not, I don't need that. I have all the memories in my mind because I don't forget a dang thing. And if I was afraid I would forget, maybe I'd take a picture, print it out, and put it in a... And then all the stuff that cluttered my attic would be in one memory book. It's the same. Right? Holding on to experiences, holding on to resentment, could be the demise of you when you can use it as the rise of you. You know? These hard times that we might have gone through this past year, they were just resistance, which is what it takes to create strength. And oh, how much stronger you are now with all you went through, right? Oh, how much you've grown. And oh, how the world may not understand it. They may look back at your videos five years ago and they may say, I liked it when you are, oh, I understand you want to keep me in a certain box that the manila folder you had me filed in? Oh, friend, I'm bigger than that. But I appreciate your words. And even though it arrived in what would appear as a package of hate, I'll assume it's love in just sort of a tricky way to decipher, but I can see it. You know? So thinking about that, um, I want to talk about more about that, though. Clutter in your mind, clutter in your space, clutter in your heart. Release. I'm going into this new year with zero resentments. I'm going into with zero debts owed from people. You know what I mean? You, in fact, have a clean slate with me. What a beautiful thing. You have a clean slate. You know, maybe you've, you've been dating people on and off or maybe you, okay, you've decided what you want in your life and you've created boundaries and, and borders and you're monitoring those and you can love people from a distance. Here's what I want in my life and that's not what you want in yours and I don't mind. You do you and I'll do me and we'll be free, right? What do you want in your life? Not just what others want you to be. Because you'll never be all you can be till you rise to the occasion of your authenticity, right?
anyway, thinking about that though, how clutter stifles creativity. And that word stifles makes me feel constricted and restrained and like I can't breathe, you know? But creating the new you and thinking about what is it you want for yourself, you know? Getting honest with yourself. What does what you want, fill in the blank, require? What does it require? You have to put in the action, right? And I have to put in the action. I mean, you want to have this medal on your wall where you ran this marathon, and even if it's just the, hey, you did it medal, whatever. But look at you getting that, okay? And then backtrack. What did you have to do to get there? And if you're like, well, I want this medal, but, uh, yeah, I'm not really willing to get up before everybody else and, and practice and run an hour a day or whatever it takes. I'm not really willing to, then you don't really want it. You just want the thought of it and you can have that with no action, right? That's just like a person that wants to be a, a guitar hero, right? And they see their self up there and they, they draw pictures of their self and they have the, the guitar with the whammy bar. Wow, 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 wow. You know, I wanted to be a guitar hero as a teenager and I thought, how cool is that? I thought I could see myself. I would be the only girl I knew. And then my mom and dad got me a guitar for Christmas. And it was white and it had like um, two pointy edges. This one was jaggedy. It had this whammy bar, which is all I know how to do. And they got me lessons, and, and I didn't want to go. I didn't like it that I needed to practice. I didn't like it that I needed to. I didn't want to do the things. So I really didn't want to be a guitar hero, did I? I just wanted to think about being one, and I could already do that. Do you really want what you're claiming that you want? Do you want to get healthy? Do I want more health in my life? Right? Do you want to do the work required to get there? You know? You want to quit drinking. Right? But you are not willing to give up going out with your friends and drinking. So you don't really want to do that. It's not that important to you. I feel like, you know how they say, to get to change, the pain of remaining the same must be greater than the pain of change. And that's what I was all those years ago. And that's what I am now. Wanting to be the best version of myself so that I can give that best version to those I love and those that I will love and have loved and, and my message to the world may resonate with one, you know? Does what you want require more than you are willing to give? even to get started. If you go forward in the next year and you see yourself at the end of the year with who, wherever you want to be, what does that require? This past year I decided I would, um, it's still kind of wet now, but then I would grow my hair out some. And when I put heat on my hair, my hair is fine, it always has been. It's very thick, it doesn't seem like it's, it's still wet, but um, and that's because for this past year, only twice have I dried my hair with any heat and it was only medium. And I really, the pain of that, because I like to get ready and move on with my day. I don't like to leave things incomplete. My hair's incomplete, it's half wet, it's half, 
But in order to grow my hair longer, I needed to quit putting the heat damage on it, right? And I did that. That was just one minor thing I'm talking about. But um, when you get to the end of the year, when you see yourself where you want to be, I mean, what does that require? I mean, it's just like I was talking to Griffin. What is, what is it you want to achieve? What are your goals for next year? What are you hoping this year will bring? And he was just like focused on his whoopee cushion. I said, is it the whoopee cushion? Because at that moment in time when you're five, that's what's important, okay? So I was like, well, let's think about that. What is great about the whoopee cushion? Getting it under somebody's bottom when they're unknowing that it's there, right? That's funny, I don't care who you are. Okay, and um, I was like, well, think about this. And even when you go into kindergarten and, and they say, you can introduce yourself and tell us something about yourself. And you could say, hey, my name's Griffin. And last year, I put a whoopee cushion under 150 people's bottoms. Bam, that's a thing. He was like, oh yeah, you know. But think about that, what does that require? If that's your goal in the end, whoopee cushion extravaganza, how are you gonna break that down? What does that look like, okay? And what is your method of getting there? So let's say you want, I did the math on this yesterday, it's on my Instagram. I can't do math out without a paper. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get that whoopee cushion, if you want eight new bottoms a month, what does that require? It requires two bottoms a week, right? And if you're gonna try to get that under two bottoms, how are you gonna do it? Are you gonna wait till they get up and they come back? Are you like Marissa and you ride the train to work? Oh yeah. See, that is a bottoms extravaganza, right? Are you gonna have like a handshake and buzzer? And when they buzz, they're like, Wah! and when they get up, you slip it under, and then, Pfft, you know? <laughs> what, is, what is the action you're taking? Because you're like, oh yeah, imagine how that would look. Well, what's it take to get there? Because you could do that, you really could. Just like I was talking about breaking down painting your whole house. What does your day-to-day -day life have to look like to get there, to support what you're saying you want? And are you, in fact, willing to do it? Right? Because if you're not, and I'm not, maybe we should lovingly suggest stop lying to ourselves. Because that's just discouraging. What's your next level? You know? Your next thing. I mean, what does your day-to-day -day look, life look like to get that? If you want to eat, for example, a raw vegan lunch, and you work at McDonald's and you can't leave on lunch, you need to pack something, right? But you don't want to pack something. You're like, I don't want to pack something. Then you don't want to do it, right? You want to quit stressing every time you sit down to pee-pee about dog hair on the baseboards. But you are unwilling to brush your dog in a systematic way or wipe the baseboards. So you don't really want to create less stress when you pee pee because the baseboard's right there. <laughs> uh. I mean, does the day-to-day -day life that it requires for you to get the thing you say that you're wanting, does it not appeal to you? And if it doesn't, is it just because that's how you've mapped it out? Could you map it out differently by, for example, habit stacking so it makes it easier to get that to a version that seems appealing to you? I think you could. What your day-to-day -day life requires for you to get there goes hand-in-hand hand with what you want. 
with the work required, you know? You want a new car? Well, okay, what does that look like for the next five years? Do you really want to pay those payments? Think ahead. How does that feel? Strategically setting up your new patterns. Like, I find that this kind of thinking doesn't appeal to most people. I, I have gotten a huge amount of what would seem like backlash and hate lately. But it is the process that has created success on lots of levels in my life. And I'm just here to speak my truth because that's all I have. And what's brilliant is that's all I need to be. Same thing with you, you know? Think about this though. You want to have this new habit in your life, okay? So really break that down. What's your system? What's it actually gonna look like? I will blank, fill in the blank with your new behavior, okay? At, when is that happening? When is the new behavior happening? And fill in this next blank, where is it happening? For example, you want to start walking every day. Well, that's the new behavior. Why do you want that? Map that out with your why. Well, your cardiovascular is in bad shape. You can't really breathe. You walk up a flight of stairs and you feel like you're gonna die, you know? Um, you can't play with your kids. Why do you want to play with your kids? Break it down because you don't want to be that mom. They remember just sitting on the sideline. You want to be able to kick the soccer ball, right? I mean, you don't want to be that mommy to your puppy that they want to go out and, and run and do hikes like my daughter's dog. He's an athlete. Ellie calls herself that, but she sees herself as that, but she don't want to put in the work. You know what I mean? Oh, we've talked about this. As you see, she's concerned. <laughs> so anyway, what does that look like? So I will, my behavior is walk one mile a day. Now, if you do that every day while you're at work, that is five miles a week. Five times four is 20. That's 20 miles, right? How many miles is that a year? Does anybody know? 20 times 12, is that 240 miles? Is that correct? Huh? Can somebody tell me? <laughs> That's a lot of miles. Do we not think by the end of the year when you have walked 240 miles versus none that you're gonna have results? Yes, you are. So I will blank the behavior, walk one mile a day, every day I'm at work. You already have the pattern of, the ritualistic pattern of going to work. You know you're going because you don't wanna be homeless and you've realized ain't nobody gonna save you, right? So you know you're doing that. So I will blank, walk one mile a day, okay? Then at what time are you doing that, when? When are you gonna do it? You're gonna do it at lunchtime because you've realized your habit stacking. You've brought your smoothie to work, therefore you can sip and walk, right? Or furthermore, you have all this time left because everybody else went out to Chipotle and you saved your money and time and got your dang walking game on. So you're gonna do that at lunchtime. And at, where are you gonna do it? You have gone over there to your work and you've driven around the parking lot or how, wherever you're gonna walk so many times and you realize if I make 12 laps around this, I've done a mile, bam, right? Then over time, get your game on. You're going to, I don't know, maybe you're gonna sprint a little bit, then you're gonna walk a little bit, sprint a little bit, right? Maybe you're going to, every time you come around your one lap, then you're gonna squat 20 times, okay? You're gonna lift your leg, whatever. Habit stacking. So, um, otherwise you're just like, I'm gonna walk in this new year. And then you get to February and you think, dang, I didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? You didn't have a system, right? 
I will blank the new behavior at what time are you doing when the new behavior at what place? How many times are you doing it? How many? Where's your star chart? I mean, why can you not have a star chart? Huh? You can get you a calendar from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Everything's a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Which is a joke because there used to be this thing my ex-husband had on his phone and when you talked into it, it would make like this, <laughs> it's Carly on here, this electronic sound and one, and, and it would turn your words and, and my ex-husband told my son, say something to it. He was tr showing him how it worked. And Christopher was like, um, there was a sign there on the Dollar Tree and it said, everything's a dollar. And Christopher said, everything's a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And then it was like, everything's a dollar at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> so you go to the Dollar Tree, okay? And you get you a calendar that's a dollar. And you also get a pack of stars that's two for a dollar. You give your one to your grandbaby, because he needs a star chart too, hello. He has a whoopee cushion plan, okay? And you start giving yourself a star. Are you gonna be perfect every day? No. But I would lovingly suggest to myself that made two days not mesh together that I wasn't on my game. Because one day is a slip up, two days is a new pattern. And it ain't the kind of pattern I'm trying to create. So anyway, what are those habits required to get to this thing you're saying you want? And are you willing to do them? What do you think? I have some new expansion going on in, in this next year that is really, um, it's not my comfort zone, it really isn't, and I'm, I'm doing it, I really am. And where is the rest of my notes on this? I wanted to make sure. Uh, for example, like, uh, also thinking of some things that are uncomfortable, um, and Christopher and I were talking about this, it's like, you know, years in past, like think about like a tribal community and and the, the boys, as they were entering puberty and manhood and all, they, there was like this rite of passage. I was listening to this thing the other day where it was like the rite of passage. Have you ever heard about somebody being stung by a, a bull ant? It's like one of the most excruciating pains. Well, they had to put their hand in this nest that had been like gassed, sort of, or something had been on them so they were kind of sleeping of bull ants. And when the bull ants came to, they were fighting mad and they were confused and they stung. I mean, and it was like, this was the rite of passage and they had to do it like 60 times. It was excruciating, but we, we don't understand that we need to have resistance to gain strength. I'm not suggesting that, but I was just saying to my son, you know, think of this past year where it was tricky. Don't think of it as negative, right? It was your rite of passage. And what's the next thing? And realize that you're in the grind time, right? There's no need to be fancy. Your basic grind time you got all that down solid, and then you move on, right? Just like your raw vegan recipes, just like your strategic patterns of being around friends and family. Um, I mean, detox, for example, is your rite of passage. It's the dark alleyway to get to the other side, and you don't get there without passing through it. It is your rite of passage to what? True health. Because health is your birthright. Hmm?
I mean, maybe your why has not been strong enough that it doesn't outweigh the comfort zone that you or I are in, right? Your easy pattern, your default setting. Your default setting will always be the easy route, right? Because the body is built to conserve energy. You'll always want the more rich, calorie-laden, fat-laden food. But your body is designed for feast and famine, and there is no famine, right? Which is a problem. And that kind of seems, sounds, and might seem overwhelming, but it's not when you break it down to these patterns, right? What is it you want? What's the behavior you need to get there? I will blank, plug in the new behavior, at what time are you going to do it, and where are you going to do it? Changing behavior by developing systems. And here's what's brilliant about it. Here's the thing that I feel like you gain by that that other people ain't even talking about. You gain self-confidence. You gain the knowing that you show up for yourself. You gain the spirit of having integrity to the, own, the promises you make to yourself. So that it starts to feel like nothing is outside of your realm, outside of your reach. Developing systems and developing self-confidence in the process of becoming the new you with new habits, you know? And in, 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 in the midst of that, we can form a new identity for ourselves. you know? I mean, if you want to be a person who is consistently walking, let's just use that example since we did, then start doing that, right? Start doing that. You're, you're like, I can't even walk to my car and back. So today, walk halfway there and back. And you are a person who showed up to walk. Next week, you're all the way up to the mailbox and back. I remember when I couldn't walk to the mailbox and back without my whole body feeling like it was breaking down. I remember when I couldn't get in and out of the car without like, because my sciatic nerve hurt that bad. I remember when I couldn't turn around to drive my car. I remember. But the next week, you walk to the mailbox and back. Five days that week. Then the next week, you walk around the block. And each day, you've shown up as a person who walks every day. The fit person who walks every day. And that will start to become your new identity. And there's self-confidence in that, right? Habits forming your personal identity. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Becoming what you want to be. You know? What this means is monitoring and taking a good look at what you're doing and upgrading. Upgrade yourself. I mean, we believe blank about ourselves. What are you saying to yourself out loud? Well, I'm just lazy. I just have no self-control. Well, I'm just a cheater. Well, I have no willpower. I just attract negative energy. I just choose bad men. I'm just always gonna be broke. I'm gonna die in this town without doing anything with my life. I don't have a family. I don't, and I am blank. I am. I 
I am a promise keeper to myself. I am the fit girl who shows up every day and call yourself the fit girl when you walked to your car and back. Huh? Envisioning yourself who parks at, a person that parks at the end of the parking lot and get your stride on, on the way. And when you show up at Costco's from the end of the parking lot and you show your card, bam. Because that's how you're showing up in this new year. I am healthy. I am powerful. I am enough. And be specific. I have abundance. I am streamlined. I am joyful. Joyful. I am love. Joy, peace, patience. I am kindness. I am goodness. And I possess self control. You can be anything you want to be. What do you want to be? I am blank. Decide what you want to be and proceed with being that. Right? It is a new year, and it is a new dawn of the new you. And people that won't, don't want to take that and run with it, so be it. But I love a new page that I get every day. But this time, it's not just a new page. It's a whole new year. It's a whole new beginning. It's a whole new moment. Every time I breathe in, the white, pure air and... Release the dark that no longer serves me. New habits can change what we believe about ourselves. Right? I think in a world that it's doped down and, um, and people can't think, but you can. You can be anything you want to be. Really, you can. What do you think? Choose wisely the words after I am, Marissa. Maritza. I was visualizing you doing something, Maritza. Um, is I was visualizing you clutter clean out this year and how that can seem so... But what if there were... We'll call the attic one room. We'll call the basement one room. That's two. There's a kitchen, that's three. Two baths, four, five. Living room and dining room, that's seven. A couple other rooms. Let's give it 10 rooms. There's 10 rooms. What if each week you clean that out? You paid for a dumpster to come. You told whoever, come get whatever. And you, each week, by the end of that week, for example, today I will release anything in this kitchen that does not serve me, that I'm not currently using, that is not current in my life. And at the end of this week, you had done that. Because you're gonna go in there with, I will do this or I'll die trying. And you won't die trying. You'll just do it. And after 10 weeks, you're free. And you don't even have to wait 10 weeks because each week, you're 10% freer until you're 100% free. Freedom from stuff. Um, Because we have a subconscious personal responsibility for things and it's holding us down. It is, it is strangling our authentic creativity. Can't hide that from the world. You're the only person that can give that because you're the only you after all, you know? Carly says she does clutter clean out for a living, would love to be of assistance. Carly's really good at that. I'm really good at that. And uh, 
I'd have to say my daughter's even better because I had many years of holding on, you know? And, um, stifling your creativity. Isn't that like a, such a weighty sounding phrase? Having what you currently use, love, and are around you. And it's okay if you, you chose paint before and you don't paint now and you give those away. That's okay. Because by giving that away, you're creating freedom. And when it's in your space and you don't do that anymore, it's creating an underlying current possibly of failure. But it's not who you are right now. It could be again. It doesn't mean you have to give it up forever. I just chose to move forward with something in my life and I waited um, till the very last minute uh, last night. It was about 8.30. And I thought and thought on it and I thought, um, it's not the only thing, but it's one great thing and I want to do it. I feel like we, we can be in, you know that the phrase analysis paralysis? especially with her health. Just do something, you know? Just walk somewhere. Go out your front door and walk five minutes out, away, and five minutes back. That's where you start. What is the behavior you want to implement? I will blank. Right? When, blank, when are you going to do it, at what place, or time, then place, whichever, but that's what you need. What's the new habit, when are you doing it, and where are you doing it, and are you going to show up? You don't need to be perfect, and I don't need to be perfect, perfectly imperfect, but may no two days go by and the sun go down without me being on my game. Because one day as an imperfection, I can pull back up, but two is beginning a new habit. And that's in op opposition of what I'm trying to do, right? Um, I see what you are saying. Kathleen, she's saying sometimes I walk 14, what's K? Is that kilometers? Oh, 14, oh, is it 1,000? Steps, never leaving the property. I use the 13 stairs in front of my house sometimes. Just that. Started walking May of 91, one day at a time. That's beautiful. I love that, all you need is you. I love that, I want to do more um, calisthenics and, and body weight training and where, anywhere you go, all you need is you. You know? Playing outside more, creating more freedom. Freedom by strategically implementing new strategies and systems that create that in my life. And people think that's so restrictive. I, it, no day goes by in my life that somebody says, that's so restrictive, or something like that. No, it's not, it's freedom. Freedom of your health. Because when you lose your health, nothing else will matter. But regaining your health, right? Systems create freedom. Carly, you remember that. Uh. And you know, so many people hold on to just 
so much resentment and it's somebody I, that I used to know. Um, I think that, that uh, I just choose, I mean, it's not like I don't remember the, the times, but I choose to see the beautiful things. And I don't mind remembering. Um, remember, I was talking to Carly about something the other day and uh, how, you know, the simple things used to matter and you build a life together and you, you held on to that person. They held on to you, not to complete you, but you are a team. Two, becoming one. Side by side against the world. You know? And... Um, and I was telling her a little story about that, and I thought, how beautiful to be able to recall something like that and not have any black spots connected with it. Releasing things that no longer serve us, that are inside of you. Hate is only poisoning you, not the people you have hate for. You know? I started to be raw since November last year, having beans and potatoes some, but not very often. More raw and feeling amazing. Life-giving foods, live food for a live body. Things that don't leave sediment in your body. You know, things that you're not bringing in, they're, they're conscious. consciousness of hate to put towards an animal or all these things like that, that becomes us we are what we eat I want to be live live food for a live body more sprouts every day is my theme for this year you like that you haven't heard that one have you letting go in 2019 Marissa Maritza I don't know why I said Marissa <laughs> I talk to you every day <laughs> Oh, real food. I love it. You know, going back to the freedom you had as a child, you know, to the, to the freedom you were when you were that kid that were like, hello, world, you know, 